Hi, Chuck Hawley from West Marine, and I'm talking with Amanda Neal and John Neal about some safety gear. So one of the things that you promote in your uh, cruising lectures is that you like to have an abandoned ship bag that has just the right gear in case you take on water and you have to get off the boat. So, John, what are some of the priority items that you put in an abandoned ship bag? I think letting someone know that you're in distress is the most important thing of all. More, more important than water or than food. And so, we actually have a, a 406 per in the abandoned ship bag, and then we have another one that's separate and then that's outside the bag. Uh, the 406 perb that has the latitude and longitude available on it is fantastic. The time to rescue worldwide uh, is phenomenal. It's just amazing how well this system works. But I think part of that communication scenario is also being able to communicate with a vessel or uh, an aircraft. So having a handheld VHF in the abandoned ship bag is your recommendation? It is, and uh, there are a couple different models now that have built-in GPS in the handheld VHF and are waterproof, and boy, that's a combination you can't, I don't think you could beat for a life raft abandoned ship bag. Now one of the things that I hear uh, from other safety folks is that they like um, handhelds that can use alkaline batteries because the alkaline batteries have really good storage life. What do you think about that? Those are the only ones we buy. And so right now we have uh, ICOM and Standard and they both have alkaline trays in them. And so what we do is we leave the tray empty without any batteries in them at all, but the batteries are in a Ziploc bag separate in the abandoned ship. So there's no chance of the battery leaking, <laughs> leaking which they will tend to do. Okay, and you can bring as many batteries, obviously. Buy them at Costco. We and at Costco. Oh, yeah. We've got a whole lot of them because we use them in all different things. Uh, okay, so you've got two means of signaling. You've got a, uh, an EPIRB or possibly even a PLB, but in this case an EPIRB, uh, and a handheld VHF. What else can you signal with? Well, Chuck, I actually take it one step further, and I have a handheld aircraft VHF radio from my flying days, and it's really great. It's no larger. It's just a little bit larger, but it works because all aircraft are required by law to monitor 121.5 over water, and so it means that we have a 200-mile radius that we can talk to any aircraft, and so for $229, that's a really small investment that just means that we have a broader range of communication. So I'm taking from what you're saying that you don't actually want to be in the life raft long enough to write the great American novel. You want to get rescued, right? I want to be really <laughs> visible. Right. And having parachute rocket flares is really, really important. Now, let me just ask you this. If you have, let's say you have uh, six hand flares and six rocket flares on your boat, would you just put them in the abandoned ship bag as they're where you store them, or would you have them split up in the boat? We have them stored in the abandoned ship bag. We actually have a, a hard pelican case and then a soft case a dry bag similar to this. And we have flares in both. And we actually have VHF radios in both. And okay. knives and lights, Okay. Et Anything else in your bag you want to show us? Well, well, there's the laser pointer. Oh yeah, the laser pointer. This is, this is great because you can then visually track who you're going, either a plane or a vessel. So it gives you a direct beam to you. Better than a strobe, which is hard to find if you're trying to track down on top of a strobe. It's an intermittent light that makes it hard for rescuers to come and get you. So a fixed beam is better. Now this is a very special one. In this particular case, this is a green laser and it's dramatically brighter and more obvious than the red lasers, which seems paradoxical, but it is. And it also puts out a vertical line so it's easier to aim. You put the vertical line sort of next to the person you're trying to see and you sweep across and it's easier to, to aim than a, just a tiny spot. What else Great. do you have? Well, we have a 406, I mean not a 406, we have a Sur Survivor 06 uh, Katadyne water maker, handheld water maker, makes enough water for 24 people. But with today's, with the electronics that we've talked about in the communication system, the chance of being in the life raft long enough to have to use the water maker is pretty slim. But, you know, if you think about the things that are going to kill you, certainly a first aid injury or hypothermia would kill you first, but dying of thirst uh, is a couple days away. So great to have a reliable source of water for as many people as you're likely to have on board any raft. You know, all, almost all life rafts come with water in little mylar pouches. Right. And it's enough water for uh, the complement of the raft for a couple of days. And there's also food in most rafts. And 
minimal first aid gear, fishing kit, repair kit. There's a lot of important stuff in there. Um, but I think the signaling and the communication is by far the most important. Great advice. If you want more advice on this, you can look at the West Advisor in the West Marine catalogs, or you can visit the uh, Mahina.com website, and you've got information on what you might put in a abandoned ship bag. Yeah. Great. Thanks, John. Thanks, Thank Amanda. You, John. And thank you for watching.